What were you doing going through Michelle's belongings? Your job. You know I am assisting Monsieur Poirot. Sure. Begin the interrogation. What is your profession? I'm a salesman. Typewriting ribbons. Do you always travel first class, Monsieur Hartman? Sure. The firm pays my traveling expenses. Where is your destination? Paris. And from there? New York. What can you tell me about the murder? Nothing at all. That is a pity. What were you doing outside Monsieur Ratchet's window? Okay, there were footprints there. Man's shoe, but not a large one. Size seven, maybe. I followed the tracks, then it looked like whoever made them put on some snowshoes and headed out over that deep snow near the back of the train. I would like to take your fingerprints. I guess it's okay. Perhaps, Monsieur Hartman, you could tell me why I found a blackjack, or sap, as I believe it's called, in your suitcase? How do you know what it's called? Crime is a hobby of mine. Yeah? Well, why don't you try knitting instead? You people are serious about this investigation, aren't you? Of course. You have heard of Monsieur Poirot? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I think I better come clean, or I could find myself in a lot of hot water here. I would advise you to... Come clean. Okay, I don't know anything, like I said. But I ought to know something. That's what makes me sore. I ought to. My passport's a bit of a bluff. That's who I really am. Please explain. I showed up at the appointed time. Ratchet put me wise to the situation. The threatening letters? Yeah, he showed me two of them. Did Monsieur Ratchet seem alarmed by the letters? Pretended not to be, but he was rattled all right. What instructions did he give you? I was to travel by the same train he did to Paris and see that nobody got him. That's the thing. I did travel by the same train, and in spite of me, somebody did get him. I feel sore about that. Doesn't look any too good for me. Did he have any idea who the letters were from? Well, Ratchet described him to me. What? Sure. Said he was a small man, dark, with a kind of... Womanish voice. Did Monsieur Ratchet not tell you the man's name? Nope. Ratchet was Cassetti, the Armstrong murderer. No kidding. <whistles> Should have recognized him. I mean, I suppose I saw photos of him in the papers and everything. Well, that explains it. Cassetti made a lot of enemies in the American underworld. He often skipped when the heat was on, leaving his partners in crime to face the music. Some assassin finally caught up with him. Say, I've really fallen down on this thing with a famous detective like Mr. Poirot on the case, too. This won't do my rep any good with my boss, Mr. McNeil, if it gets back to him. I'm in the same predicament, Monsieur Hartman, believe me. You are? Well, that's good. I mean, bad for you, but... Say, listen, if we could keep the mess I've made out of this thing between ourselves... I must tell Monsieur Poirot everything. Oh, sure, sure. I'll have to swallow my professional pride there, but... If we can keep it on this side of the Atlantic, maybe? I'd really appreciate it. I'll see what I can do. Do you know anyone connected with the Armstrong case who matches the description Monsieur Ratchet gave you? Well, that's hard to say. They're mostly dead, aren't they? Yes. Mrs. Armstrong, Colonel Armstrong, the nursemaid who threw herself out a window. I remember now. The nursemaid was suspected. She killed herself even though she was eventually clear. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Snow is very bright. So, yeah, that nursemaid was a foreigner, I think. Maybe she had some foreign relations or something. But that wasn't the first time Cassetti had run that kidnapping stunt. I bet there are lots of people had it in for him. Please tell me your movements after dinner last night. I played some cards with that Italian guy at the front on the coach. Then when people started turning in, I went back to my room. Stayed up all night, had my door a bit ajar so I could keep watch, but nobody could see me. You get it? I understand how it is done, yes. Could you see the attendant from that position? Sure. He sits on that little seat right past my room. Can you describe his movements? Let's see. He answered a couple of bells after the snow stopped us, went back into the rear coach for ten minutes or so. Then there was a bell ringing like mad and he came running back. I got a bit nervous over that. 
but it was just that talking of American game, raising hell about something or other. A bit later, he headed off to make somebody's bed up. Then he settled in. Did you see anyone moving up and down the passage? Nope. Is there anyone on the train who can confirm your identity? My credentials are taped to the bottom of the table in my compartment along with my real passport. I'm sure you can find them. Do you smoke, Monsieur Hartman? Sure. I've got some cigarettes in my room. Come on by this evening after things quiet down. I can be far more entertaining than that mouse of a woman in your room. No, thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Hartman. Pierre Michel's passport and an old photograph. I'll just borrow both of them. I would like to take your fingerprints. What is that you say? I protest. I have nothing to do with this crime. Everyone must be fingerprinted. Refuse? No, no, of course not. Let's get it over with. I don't think he's in the mood for conversation. I won't find anything else in there. Do you have a plan to the Athens-Paris coach? Si, senorita. Which rooms are occupied in this car? The Greek doctor is the only passenger. He is in room 13. I have taken room 15 there to sleep in, and room 16 for my equipment. I hope it is all right. Pierre Michel is using room 11. The chef de cuisine is in 9. Lucien, the waiter, is in 1-2. The engineer is resting in 10 when not attending to the boiler. The fireman rests in 3-4. What equipment? I am a ham radio operator. Usually I carry the equipment in the baggage car. There is no time to use it when I'm on duty. And anyway, no power. But when we were stopped so suddenly, I thought to check it and found my telegraph key destroyed. I don't understand it. It was packed carefully. I brought the rest here to my room to keep it safe. Did anyone pass between this car and the Calais coach last night? Only Pierre. He came through and we talked for a few minutes about the snow and what it will do to the schedule. When was this? Sometime after 1 a.m. A few minutes only. We talked for 10 minutes or so. Then Michel fancied he heard a bell. He opened the doors between the two coaches and we both heard it plainly. A bell. Ringing repeatedly. Michel ran to answer it. You boarded the train in Belgrade? Si, senorita. Why were you so late? Your passenger must have boarded by himself, and you yourself almost missed the train. But this is not so. I was preparing my car as it was being attached. I myself welcomed the Greek doctor and showed him to compartment 13. I would like to fingerprint you. I, senorita? Everyone. Oh, then see, si, see, si, I will submit. Good day, monsieur. I would like to fingerprint you. Hey, I'm Majbur, son. Seninle sonra konuşacağım. Söz veriyorum. Ben 
I still need to ask you some questions about last night. At your service, dear young lady. But I know nothing. Did you see anyone leave the train last night? No. But as I have told you, we were busy with the boiler. The pressure must be kept up for the light and heat. Did you see anyone get on the train? In Belgrade, there was a single passenger only for the Aten Paris coach. No one at the other stops that I saw. Can you describe this passenger? He was small, dark. A doctor, I think, Michel said. No one else? Well, Matteo, of course, the Athens Paris attendant. Not to speak ill of the crew, but he was very late getting aboard. We left the station only moments later. I would like to fingerprint you. Anything you require. However, if you are planning to smear that typewriting ribbon on my fingers, it is unnecessary. My fingers are black from cold dust already. Au revoir, monsieur. I'll put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at it later. Monsieur Poirot. With many things to overemphasize new species, the butcher and speaker tries to see the more fundamental than usual today. Work from avalanches and murder, the unprecedented, by the support of the country, what we know of classic movement last night. And that is everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. The timetable is very complete now. Oh yes, it is essential to the understanding of the crime. Study it carefully. We have many alibis we can use to eliminate suspects. Yes, too many. Compare them all. Look for discrepancies. We must be certain that they do not leak the water. I believe I have collected all the passports. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. I think I have secured all the fingerprints. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. Madame Hubbard heard a woman in Monsieur Ratchet's room. Wait. And about the time you heard the noise and saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. So, does a woman speak to Monsieur Ratchet, murder him, drop a handkerchief with the letter H, then scurry off down the corridor in a scarlet kimono? Or does Madame Hubbard hallucinate a woman's voice as well as the man in her room? The valet masterman says Ratchet took less than his normal sleeping draft. So, instead of a comatose Ratchet, who would not struggle when the knife began its work, 
we have a Ratchet who might cry out. But after the cry, I heard Ratchet tell Michelle that there was nothing wrong. Monsieur McQueen saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. But not enough to identify her. And he says he saw Michelle coming from the direction of the salon car. Or at least someone in an attendant's uniform. Colonel Arbuthnot saw the attendant and thinks he caught the scent of a woman. Ah, the scent of a woman. You have found a romantic streak I would not have suspected one so stolly to possess. Hildegard Schmidt saw an attendant leaving a compartment. We, oui, one of the middle rooms. Either Ratchet's or Madame Hubbard's. And his description? No, it is not Pierre Michel, this small dark man with a moustache who speaks in the high voice. No, but he matches the description Ratchet gave Hartman of his enemy. Both Madame Hubbard and Mademoiselle Olsen confirm the connecting door was locked. An attendant's passkey opens even connecting doors, I think, so I am not so baffled by that locked door. Colonel Arbuthnot saw Monsieur Hartman watching the corridor from his room. Monsieur Hartman's door opens to the right, so unfortunately he could see little of the corridor, but he would have seen if anyone entered the Calais coach from the Athens Paris coach. The steak knife I found by the cliff was clean. No blood or fingerprints. Mm, it is a nuisance, that knife. On the face of it, it is of no importance. And yet, someone has taken the trouble to try and fling it over a cliff. Hardman's actions were very suspicious. And the key he discovers in Michel's clothing that opens the door to the security room in the baggage car is suspicious as well. McQueen is the son of the district attorney involved in the Armstrong case. Uh, uh, pardon, district attorney? What is that? Some sort of police official, I believe. Princess Dragomirov was Sonia Armstrong's godmother. Oui, it is coincidence. Or something more? Merci, mademoiselle. Unfortunately, the report it is not yet complete. We are now armed with much more additional knowledge than the first time you made the interrogations of our fellow passengers. So please speak with them again. Ask the questions subtle or intended to incite. But we must learn more. Also, the Calais coach has become very still. I think most of them are occupied elsewhere. I would suggest taking this opportunity to make any searches of the belongings you were unable to do earlier. And do not forget the baggage car. Or the Athens Paris coach. The key worked. It's locked fast. Fast. I think I heard a click. It's open. It's locked fast. I'll put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at it later.
Well, what do we have here? What's all this? Crime et punition. Géographie européenne. Introduction à la science. Interesting selection. It's a makeshift bed, but who could possibly be using it? It looks like someone had a meal here recently. I'd better put the lid back on for appearances. <laughs> 